of evangelism, but we go into villages in order to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, but also be able to talk about disease prevention. And so that is really exciting. When I say we, I supervise, but I go. The minute a white person enters a village, it speaks of money. And that's not our goal. Our goal is that villagers themselves can decide how, to, how are we going to solve these problems? What do we need to do? And so total these people that we've trained go into these villages and get to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, so that's what we do. And every week, every week, every Thursday, every Wednesday, uh, there's a team that goes into different villages. Uh, let me have Adelie, one of our leaders, one of the leaders of this ministry, um, move up one more slide. And uh, let me have him tell you what this ministry is like. Plus, it gives you a great view of villages in total. Mm -hmm. In the village, before she arrived, it was there. The animals were under Ogwa. The people didn't have clean water, so they drank dirty river water. Most of the children and some of the adults had abdominal pain and diarrhea and were irritated by. When she entered the village, we began teaching about how to have health. Because of our lessons, we saw changes in May. The villagers began keeping the animals in enclosed areas. They were sweeping and keeping their homes clean. With the help of Che, the wells in the village were repaired. They now are clean water. The health is much improved in the village. The villagers are not irritating blood. Because they have learned this lesson, they know what to do and how to be healthy. As far as religion, the people were animated. They worshipped trees and the things of the earth. Before chicken, there was an idol in almost every house. So hour after we arrived in the village, we gave all the members a calendar. On the calendar there was a verse where Joshua said to the people of Israel, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We shared this verse with the villagers and afterwards they asked, Is there anyone who can have a Bible study in our view to teach us the problem? We chain members were praying that this question of the Bible study would come from them. So the fact that they asked this question was an answer to prayer. The Bible study group started and has grown to see there is now a church in Kadas Company. Now many of the villagers have, have made a decision to follow Christ. There is still a lot to do. That's what you prayed for, that's what you gave to, and God is doing incredible things in the country of Togo. Let me just show a couple more things real quickly. Uh, you prayed God is building his church. He's, he's building his church. People come to know him as Savior. People are being baptized, and we are delighted. This verse sums it all up. For now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. Only God. Only God. Unto him be glory. He gets it all. It's not us, it's never us, but it's God who is accomplishing incredible things in Togo and through people worldwide, and uh, that's exciting. So the question is, how will you allow God to use you? How will you allow God to use you? Are you willing to go? Are you willing to give? Are you willing to pray? Because I believe that every single one of us needs to answer that in our minds. What does God want me to do? either here in Ferndale, or in this area, or I don't know where, maybe the other side of the world. What does he want for you? What does he want for you? Uh, and that's, that's our responsibility. And that's what's exciting, is what, what is he going to do? Let me just throw up a few uh, comments for prayer, and I can talk to some of you if you're interested afterwards. 
uh, please pray for workers. We need all these people in Togo. I remember speaking in a church once and I said, we can use any profession. Well, wouldn't you know it? Somebody in the back raises his hand at the end and says, you said you can use any profession in missions. I didn't say Togo, but in missions. And he said, I don't really know if that's true. And I said, well, what is, what is your profession? He said, I'm working on my PhD in astronomy. And I said, well, oh, interesting. I said, but think about it. In, in a heartbeat, any university in the whole world would want you to come and teach in that university. The minute you arrive, you are right in that particular community, in that particular university, in that country. So God can use any of those things. Pray for the next nursing program. Uh, when I go back, they, uh, I will be in the north of Togo primarily. They want a nursing school started almost immediately. And so please pray. Uh, we expect over a thousand people. Last time we had almost 800 that uh, applied, who applied for 18 spots. Uh, I asked the students before, the nurses before I left, I said, what do you think this time? More or less thing? They said, oh, way over a thousand. You'll have way over a thousand applying. And so, uh, and if you want to adopt uh, a student or a part of a student, uh, there are some brochures back there. You could read about how to do that. Pray for the chain ministry, that God will continue to touch hearts in villages, uh, that, that, that people will come to know him, that God will continue to lead us in every single step of this ministry. It's exciting what God's doing. Other projects that I just threw up here, uh, computers, if you, have, if you updated your computer and you'd like to have a good use for maybe one that's still in good condition, motorcycles, if you want to buy a goat for pastor, uh, that's, that's an interesting project. Uh, goats or sheep or pigs. Uh, for them, it sounds like you have some. And we could arrange to get them there. Uh, and uh, good, good. That's all we need is <laughs> a nice a baggage compartment. I, I'd appreciate I'd appreciate your prayers for me as I continue on furlough uh, with uh, being in churches, speaking to individuals as God allows. Return to Togo probably mid-December. I was supposed to return in October, but with COVID, the mission has extended another three months to be able to try to, to be in different churches. Uh, and then once I do get back, the plan is to start in 2021, the next nursing school in the north. Uh, south doesn't need it anymore right now. And so that's going to be on hold until we get more doctors there. And uh, planned graduation in 2024, continued involvement in the chain ministry in the south. If I could take maybe like two more minutes and just uh, just emphasize this idea of prayer and just talk to you about praying for your missionaries, um, that it is so important. Uh, there's a song that's going to be played, we hope, and um, this song is written by a missionary and it talks about prayer and what it means for we missionaries when you pray. And while you hear the song, I'm just going to be showing a few slides of uh, Togo again just to remind you of some of dear people there. This is based on the song that talks about Moses when he had to put his arms in the air so that the Israelites would win the battle and his arms got tired. And so Aaron stood on one side, Hur stood on the other side. They held his arms up so they were, there would be victory. And how often I have just thought, I am so exhausted, you know, but somebody's praying. And so God's giving the strength to keep going. And uh, that's exciting. So if we can go ahead and do that, that'd be great.
Church of Ferndale. Thank you for your involvement and what God is doing in Togo. And uh, thank you for your love for God first and for others and for praying and for living. Pastor Thomas. stuff in the back should be in the back you can uh, approach her if you do please put your mask on and just honor uh, what we've been asked to do let's pray lord as we close out and as we sing praises to you we recognize that it's not all about sharing but we pray for her because she carries your words of life she doesn't carry words of medicine or money she is carrying uh, your gospel, your good news, the victory that has been won through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for impressing upon her to share and to make it the most important thing about her ministry. Lord, I think you honor that, that her faith and trust is solely in you, not in her abilities. So, Lord, we're not here to honor her, but to say thank you to you, Lord. And and Lord, thank you for allowing her to share the wonderful ministry of Togo and the Togolese and the hard road that is still yet uh, ahead, especially in the north. So uh, protect her, we pray, so that she can uh, encourage many more to hear about uh, Jesus and about what you have done for us. So Lord, bless her, I pray. Impress upon us to hear your faithfulness to those that trust you. And may we follow suit and do the same thing and be a good foundation and encouragement for many missionaries abroad. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just want to read with you a little bit. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, 
is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave who? Gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal to us, he implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Um, we heard the great testimony of what's going on in Togo, but it's uh, every believer who has put their trust and faith in Jesus Christ. It says in Romans 10, it says, How then will they call on him whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news, but they have no obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. We are all ambassadors of Jesus Christ. It's a blessing to hear the ministry in Togo, and we pray and we encourage you, if the Lord moves you to go somewhere around the world, go obey God's call. But you know what? Every single day here on this soil, this is our ministry. And our call is to be ambassadors for Christ, to share the good news. You know, and, and it's something beautiful. We were just talking about all these things, uh, uh, nurses that are doing the work. Uh, we hear some of here that are going to school to be nurses, but they have the aiming to serve the Lord. So when I show up to work tomorrow morning, my first prayer has to say, it has to be, well, I'm going to go fix this light or no. It has to be, Lord, how can you use me today? How can I be used? Can I be an instrument for you? Can I be a tool for your glory? As we continue putting our focus in that, what a joy it is to live for the Lord. That's the only thing that brings joy, that brings pleasure, that will fulfill our lives. So let's worship. Minds are days that God has numbered.
Thank you, Lord, that you have given us purpose for our life. If there is no purpose, Lord, if there is only worldly desires in our life, we pray, Lord, that we be able to surrender our lives completely to you. Lord, I pray if anybody here has never received you as their Lord and Savior, I pray that you steer their hearts. I pray that you be the king of their lives, the one, the lover of their soul, Lord, that you are the only one who can open hearts. Just like Charles was sharing, um, it's not just about lifting hands or whatever that, but it's about really coming to a true understanding that need and that desire for you, Lord. So I pray that that desire burn in our hearts. And for those who have put uh, trust and faith in you, Lord, may you encourage us, may you convict us, may you fill us with your word, with uh, just uh, your presence, that we can live a life honoring to you. We are no perfect, but we need you. That's why Christ died on that cross, because we cannot save ourselves, because we cannot pay for the sin of our life. But you did, Jesus Christ. So we thank you for that beautiful gift of heaven, of just the beautiful things that we have ahead of us, Lord. So help us to keep our eyes focused on you and not on these worldly pleasures, Lord, but in you and only you. May you be blessed as we walk our lives here on this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A wonderful afternoon. Remember, we can have more fellowship outside. And uh, so we've got to leave the building so we can talk with each other. But hopefully I get to have some of you. Thank you.